afternoon, everyone, from Fanning the Flame in Jerusalem. Well, those of you who follow me know that my heart is to encourage and to be real, to be honest, to live a life with integrity, to follow after the Lord Yeshua, which means God's salvation. So I had to cut my trip short. I was uh, in the Galilee Mountains, as you know, and the barrage of missiles and uh, very unsettling when you don't have a bomb shelter, etc. So I am still retreating. Um, and I wanted to talk about discerning rest. It's like we know we have work to do going forward. Of course, God gives us the work of our hands, but he also gives us rest. And there's the scripture, God gives his beloved sleep. And so as much as we want to go and do and accomplish and follow after the Lord in activity for him, we also need to discern the rest. Because sometimes when we don't, we've gotten sick because that was the only thing that would get us flat out. And so we don't want that. I want to talk about something very concerning. The Word of God tells us not to gossip or slander. And I remember Pastor Wayne Hillsden, he, he just has these one-liner gold nuggets that you just don't forget. Really diamonds of, uh, of, um, of wisdom. And he said years ago, if the body of Messiah is gossiping and slandering, what makes us different than the world? Nothing. Yeah, I always remembered that he said that. And so I say that to segue into what I want to talk about now. I have two brothers in the Lord that are dear to me, very dear to me. And, uh, and I met a gentleman some time ago that I know in the Lord. And he made a comment about both of them because I, I guess I had just mentioned, I mean, he knows one of them is in my life and the other one is a new friend, a new brother, dear brother in the Lord. And as soon as he made those comments, my mind went to, what is your motive? Because if you're not speaking positively about another brother or sister in the Lord, about, you know, whether you're a believer or not, if you're not speaking positively, if you've got any brains at all, the person who's hearing it, you're going to think, what's your motive? So I said, well, that's really between him and God. God knows that's between him and God. And if you're concerned about this that you've mentioned to me, pray, pray for him. That was my response. And I sat on it for a few days and he challenged me to actually uh, confront one of the brothers. So I think the healthy thing to do is not to listen to gossip. And if it's something that concerns you, go to that person. Absolutely. And so I sat on it for a few days and then I did. And we had a long, ch a very long chat about it. And apparently we all have a past. In fact, the ironic thing is the brother who said these things to me has a past. We all have a past, unless you've grown up in a faith-filled family, a believing family, and you shoot them aside. We all have a past, but none of it matters because it's under the blood of Yeshua. When we receive Yeshua as our sin kippura, our covering, our propitiation, our substitute for our sin, it's all in the sea of forgetfulness. It's under the blood of Yeshua. And the only reason I brought it up with my brother is because if there was anything going on now, any participation in it now, that was my concern. But I did sit on it for a few days, and we had a long, wonderful talk. And this kind of stuff is venom. It's poisonous, and we do, and we should, and we ought to hold one another to a higher standard because we're in the faith. We can't expect somebody in the world who's living to please their flesh because they don't have Holy Spirit and they have no other choice. All of us, before we have the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, the Spirit of Yeshua living within us, is living to please the flesh. There's no other option. But when we become born again, born of the Spirit, born anew, then we have Holy Spirit, which leads, guides us into all truth. Apart from Holy Spirit, no one can declare Yeshua is Lord. Then we can choose 
to kill the flesh. Now the flesh is not being transformed into anything on this side of heaven, but we submit it to the spirit of Yeshua every moment of every day. And we choose God. Oh yes. So our past is under the blood. And yes, we should we should be living upright and holy lives, and we can. The word of God says we can. It is possible because we have the spirit of righteousness, so to speak, living within us, the spirit of Yeshua, so we can. So what was so disturbing to me is that the brother who was saying these things seemed to have written off, clearly, written off my friend because he didn't, he didn't have the patience to hear out his story. And then he does, he's not involved in this anymore. Not that it was any of this guy's business. Because there's only one judge, and it's not me, and it's not you. And I feel like so much of the body of Messiah is guilty of the sin of judgment. And Yeshua addresses that. And he says, take the plank out of your own eye before you tell your neighbor about the splinter in theirs. We are called to love, period. Period. I am not the Holy Spirit police. I am not a judge. And this will turn people so far away. If they're on the way to God, if they're seeking God, you act like this, you will turn them away. Because love is always the witness. Oh, yes. Yes, the word of God does say, I believe it's in Jude, that some we are to be gentle with and others we ought to snatch from the fire. But this wasn't the case at all. And so it disappointed me that this brother who was saying these things did not have the patience to listen and hear that the brother is not participating in these things anymore. Not that it's any of his business. Our past is under the blood. And it, I think it's a big downfall in the body of Messiah. You come in, you get delivered from one sin, and you pick up the other sin of judgmentalness. And I'm running so far in the other direction. And the other thing that relates to that is when I've had people say to me, uh, for example, a dear, dear friend stepped out during worship. When we are to be free to worship, she stepped out to dance because that's how the Spirit led her. And when she was sharing that with me and the story she was sharing, she began to qualify and it's because we've been judged by so many and i said my dear you don't need to qualify anything to me no i am not in that group of people that is not who i am i'm not saying i've never judged because everyone's fallen short of the glory of god but that is not my mo that is not where i'm coming from and anybody who knows me intimately knows that it's not. And so let's get off our high horse today. And this is what I think. I think people that are consumed, believers that are consumed with judging others, it's because they can't dare to look at their own sin with God. They, they won't, they refuse to look at their own downfall so their eyes are on everybody else. And as long as you do that, as long as everybody else is at fault, you can be assured you're the problem. You can be assured you're the one with the attitude. And on the tales of that, I'll say, there have been times when um, it seemed to me that someone around me had a really bad attitude. And once again, it's comical. The Lord showed me that it was me. It was my attitude. So I'm looking through the lens of a bad attitude, so it seems like everybody has a bad attitude. No, it's my attitude. And it is sad and comical at the same time. We don't see ourselves. We need people in our lives. Iron sharpens iron as a friend sharpens the other countenance. Just because a relationship is challenging does not mean we ought to trash it. On the contrary, there are relationships that have the very breath of God on them. They are anointed and set up by God, but they're challenging because in relationships, yes, we do hurt. We, we do have and do get hurt, but in relationships, we heal. And God's order of things is to be in relationships that cause us, cause us, cause us to grow if we will accept the challenge. Do -do 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 Unless you're a monk, a monk or nun, nun is the female version, I guess, of the monk. And I, I have dear friends who are, uh, that I've known for years. Uh, they're called to solitude. And it is a call. 
We are all called singularly in our specific call. I don't know anyone else that has my call here in Jerusalem doing what I'm doing. Hallelujah. Praise God. There's one mold for me, one mold for you. And this is why it's so essential. It's critical that as we partner with God and we allow him to be our dance leader, we follow him. He is driving. We are his partner and we say yes. And wow, our availability to the King of Kings, he can do great things through us as we surrender all. Food for thought. God bless you from the Tabernacle of David Prophetic Dance Center in Jerusalem.